Three, two, one, and we're live. Hey, uh, this is Side by Side. Uh, I'm here with my friend, the one and only <laughs> Leslie Romero. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Seriously. You're welcome. Um, it is a, a privilege and an honor to have you uh, here with me. And uh, I'm so excited. I can't tell you. Like, I know you know <laughs> I'm excited to do this podcast. I know it's going to be a good one. Uh, there's going to be... A lot of great conversations mm-hmm. that come from this. No, no, <laughs> don't even try to tone it down. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. Um, so, I, you know, before we get started, um, just a little bit about yourself. Just you know, for uh, somebody that maybe has never watched this before, uh, just a little bit. Sure. Um, so I've known Sam for forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we grew up in in church. Um, so we go way back. Um, But uh, currently, I'm in school studying psychology um, and Bible, and I'm also serving at the church where I'm at. So Um, when you when you were here with our church, um, you served in the youth ministry, and I think you serve in the youth ministry as well at the Mm -hmm. current one, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, here, like you've always been involved with music, Mm -hmm. and I know that's like a like that's a big deal for you. Like music, <coughs> that's that's for your home. Um, you know, I couldn't even One just label. Sure. I couldn't just label it like worship, like because as far as long as I've known you, you've always been involved with music, in one way or another. Mm-hmm. So whether it be like um, you were playing an instrument, you mm-hmm. were singing, um, you were uh, even like writing music. Some people don't know she writes music as well. Uh, she doesn't just write music lyrics as well. Like. Seriously, gifted and talented. She doesn't <laughs> no like it. No one has heard. <laughs> <laughs> she, but <laughs> hey, I've heard some of it. I've heard a, f- a, a few of the things that you've, you know, put uh, pen to paper and uh, great stuff. And I'm just hoping that you know, one day everyone else will be able to hear those things as well. Um, but hey, like how how did it all begin for you? Like where like where did you find the inspiration, or how did this whole music journey begin for you? Sure. So. Um Singing, uh, I started when I was about maybe four or five, and I would always sing, okay, maybe five, six, because I would start singing with my cousin. Okay. And I always thought it was like drums. And she was younger. Okay. Um, but we'd go up, and then I'd cry. Like, I wouldn't, they wouldn't hand me the mic, and I was already crying. Mm-hmm. So uh, that just didn't go well. And then uh, slowly, I, I really got into drums for whatever reason. Um, I don't even know why. I remember I would watch the drummer, um, and and he noticed that I was like looking, and and that's how that so started. So wait, so I've always known you as a as a drummer, but you're saying singing came first. Yes. Why? Why? Like I know there's got to be a reason. Why do you think that instead of you know always doing singing, like you went into like drums? Why? Do you think there was some, like, subconsciously, like, a different reason? Maybe, like, you wanted, like, you were a little reserved or, like, um, like maybe you were... Uh, Hiding in the background a little bit. Mm, okay. <coughs> yeah, maybe like, something like... So you think it was something like that? Or um, I, honestly, I mean, now that I think about it, yes. Um, but at the time, I just had, like, this big passion for it. Mm. Um, and, and it's not something very... Back then... Hasta menos. Um, you hardly saw any girls playing drums, um, but yeah, for sure, I'm I'm very um, conservative. I'm I'm uh, reserved, and you know, drums is something like the drummer ju- is just in the back. So, um, I remember, you know, back in the day, um, in my opinion, and you know, but you were like one of the like. I don't want to say one of, to me, you were the best one. Like when you hit that drum, like it was solid, you know, it was just precise, you know, uh, it it was just on point. And, um, then like, I don't know, like we had a lot of good drummers too. You know, it wasn't just like, um, nobody wanted to play drums and that's why they put you up there. Uh, Yeah, you're right. Well, well, what was that like? Um, because typically you don't see a woman like, Mm -hmm. or a girl, you know, now it's more common, Sam. Well, um, but yeah, back then it wasn't, and um, I mean, 
I started and I sucked. Uh, I was really bad, you know. Uh, they let me get. They gave me the cowbell, you know. You just hit it with <laughs> the cowbell, just the stick, and and that was it. Um, but I, I'm one of those people that if I hear like you suck or mm. you know, in, in, in something, on, fuel, man. I'm gonna make you eat your words. Mm. Like I'm gonna come on, you know. I'm gonna get better. Um, and so yeah, that surely that's what happened. And and I'll tell you the story because I think it's good, and I've shared it. Um, but we were, you know, in, in a big service. It was a, 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 an important service, I guess, because the most people would come. And I was playing. And it was like in the middle of the service, mm -hmm. the, the, the main drummer <laughs> okay. was walking in into the building. Okay. <laughs> and the, the, the guy that was leading worship, uh -huh. uh, it was like during offering. And usually before offering, they pray. And so he sees them and he's like, his name. Right, he shouts out his name. I'm not gonna say it. Roberto. <laughs> Roberto, <laughs> will you come up here and help us wow. on the? And I was there. We were literally Wait, about mic? to, yeah, on the mic, <laughs> in front of the whole church, 200, wow. 300 people. You know, and I was sitting, and so I had to sheepishly. You know, <laughs> the chair cracks while you're turning. And then just oh like give him the sticks. It was so embarrassing because usually you have one drummer. I don't for think the I've whole, ever seen that before. For the whole night. Or I don't think I've ever seen that. So that night I, I was like, I built up <laughs> so much anger. And I remember just saying to myself, I, I, I'm going to make him pay or whatever. Wow. But I, I'm not a, abusive. Not in a like revengeful right, kind right. of way, but more of like, you know. And more for me. Right. You know, um, because basically you're telling me that I'm not that good. Um, and so I remember I, I told my dad to buy me a drum. And I was like 11, 12 at this point. And he bought a drum set, put it in the garage, and I was there every day, every day after school, every day, just practicing and practicing. And so the time passed, and this guy, we were setting up the schedule. The guy who, like, The guy who called the other drummer. We were setting up the schedule. And they were like, um, he, they were trying to figure out who was going to play. And, and he was like, uh, give me Leslie because uh, she's the best one. Mm. And then I purposefully said, <laughs> I, I can't that day. I can't that day. Mm. But, you know, that's when I knew. You had arrived. You know, come on. Like okay. <laughs> the, the, the labor had paid off, you know, all that hard sure, work, sure. you know, that that you put in. And, you know, I think that that's important because sometimes we don't realize that, you know, what we sometimes we need fuel. You know, and mm. um, it's crazy how what will break some people will make other people, right? Mm. Some people, some people will allow. Say some louder for the people in the back. Mm. <laughs> 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 some people will allow a situation like that to just, you know, define them. You know, mm. like oh, like I'm not good. Mm. That's why they did that. Mm. And other people were like, well, you just don't know, mm. you know, kind of thing. And so. You know, you allowed that to, to fuel you to, to really show who you are. You knew what you had inside of you. You yeah. know who you were. Um, and you were like, okay, like, uh, he just doesn't know yet. Yeah. You know, and uh, you got your, your time to kind of let For him sure. um, understand that, you know, and stuff. But, but that's awesome because uh, whether you know it or not, that kick started a journey for you, right? Yeah. Where, you know, it wasn't just because I'm sure you, you use that same drive, that same you know, uh, whatever you used to, to, to get to that level with the drums. Cause again, like people, if you haven't heard her play drums, like, okay. I don't know, maybe no, she's rusty now, yeah. <laughs> maybe she's rusty now, like but she years. was solid, man. She was good. Uh, she knew what she was doing, uh, playing those drums, but you use that for like singing, you know, and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, uh, I think, you know, w whenever you can, use what you've been given, you know, and, and take it to another level. Cause I don't think people understand, like everyone is given something, mm -hmm. you know, and it's what you do with that, like what you're, you're given. Now I know that there might be more gifted, more talented people, but you know, if you put more work in, you know, mm -hmm. like if, if you outwork everybody else, like you'll be good at it. it For sure. It's about, you know, you really, you know, working on your craft, right? Just, uh, making it perfect and, and finding where you're good at, you know, and obviously not trying to be someone else. Did you ever find yourself trying to be like somebody else? Like sing like somebody else maybe? 
Rachel Lampa. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Valencia. <laughs> Nobody knows who that yeah, is. I know, right? <laughs> who? Like what? Um, when I in, in singing though, singing is also a, a, a different story. But I want to hear that too. No. Um, yeah, no, not that I remember of. I mean, I listened to a lot. Yeah. I, I heard a lot of Jack Kirilaskis, a lot of um, Rachel Lampa, but um, to be like them and sing them like them, no, I don't think. Beyonce, so. or like, it doesn't have to be Christian. Like Becky G. Um, Becky G. Yeah. <laughs> <She> <laughs> Alicia <wasn't> Keys. <laughs> I don't know no <laughs> Becky G, but I know Alicia don't Keys. Get me started with Alicia. Come on, man. Let me call her. No. <laughs> <laughs> Marcos, we. <no. laughs> um, well, you, you said there's a story behind like singing too. Let, let me hear a little bit about that for, for well, our, those aspiring singers aspiring that we have singers. that might be listening. Sammy's bumping me up. I am not good. No, she is. Like those, no. those are the you that know you know. But I, I think for everything, there's a process, right? And and that's what we how we grow and, and we become a better person. But with singing was also a process. And we talk about church because it's where we grew up. Um, yes. and it's pretty much all we know. So with singing, you know, also started pretty young, but there was like a big gap. And I remember my dad really wanting me to sing. And back then they used to have like Christian stories and they used to have, um, pistas. Um, they're like karaoke, um, just like the things. melody. Yeah. It, just it was like a tape like mm -hmm. this big. And you would go by the tape of the song that you wanted to sing and you would bring it to church. Mm -hmm. You would give it to the guy in the back. Play <laughs> number seven. Play. <laughs> <laughs> and if you messed up, you'd be like, no. <laughs> El Run it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. Run it again. <laughs> Póngamelo otra vez. <laughs> no, but I remember my dad. I did it for my dad. Um, and I was older now, 13 or something. And I remember people coming up to me and be like, oh, my gosh, you know how to sing. You like, And I didn't even know that. I didn't even know. I just sang because I wanted to make my dad happy. Mm. Um, but um, that that's when I started. And then, um, you know, obviously we sang in front of a, a group of people. And when I started leading worship, obviously all of these eyes are on you. And I remember one specific moment, and I think we had moved into the bigger building um, I was like, man, I because I, I would sing like this. I would sing with my head down mm. the whole time, right? And I remember I was like, I really want to look up. I want to look at the people. And I always wore glasses or contacts. And that day I had glasses and I took my glasses off. Mm. And I was so confident. I was just like Come staring on. at everybody <laughs> and, you know, like just using my hands and everything. But that was the beginning. And then, you know, later you get more comfortable and then, you know, you put your glasses on and, and you're able to, um, sister Gallegos, who is someone beloved. Um, she inspired me so much and I wanted to be like her when I was little, man, sis, you mentioned sister Gallegos <laughs> like sister for G. me. Yeah. She, Shout out. <laughs> for real. Like we sister, love you. Tabby, if you're watching this, make sure, uh, sister <laughs> Gallegos watches this. But I mean, I think for most of us, man, when she, right. she has like an old soul, you know, like when she, that woman sings, man, she just, it's just like, she's looking at Jesus mm. and just singing. Tell it how it is. Yes, Come on. Like, like, no, for real. Like she would smile and she would just you make you and make you smile. <laughs> <laughs> we, we call her the songs that she sings, Coritos, uh, which I think are hymns, hymns, right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, they're hymns. And man, like they just, they just, you know, take you to a place, man, that, you know, these new, new songs, you know, Hill Song and all that, like, those are great and everything. And I'm an emotional type of person and I'll cry, but man, like, <laughs> I remember with Sister Gallegos with some of those songs, like, um, just really definitely like almost questioned my manhood a little bit. Mm. No, I'm playing. <laughs> definitely not. But just definitely like take you to like a place where you know, you, you literally feel like you're in the presence of God, yeah, you know, for sure. And, um, it's that anointing. anointing. Exactly. You know, I, I was just going to say like, um, you could tell, you know, she seeks God. Mm, you know, it's, that's it right there. You can tell when someone spent time with the Lord. She, yeah. Is not just up there performing, you know, she's not up there trying to impress anybody. Mm. She's there leading you to the presence of God. Yes. She's been there, yeah, right? Yeah. She's, she's put in the, the time, the, the alone time, the secret place, yes. right. With God. And, and, 
you know, it really translates, right? You can really see that when uh, when she's leading worship. And, sure. you know, one time I recently I told her, you know, like, sister, why don't you sing anymore? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm still singing. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you like, been? <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't come to church. Yeah, basically is what she was saying. But no, <laughs> like, um, it's because she sings Sunday mornings. And okay. Sunday mornings we're, we're in the... Uh, yeah uh, the youth building so i don't get to hear her anymore and that's one of the things that i, I will say i miss is uh hearing her sing but that's <coughs> awesome to hear that you know you know a lot of people might think it's um you know someone secular or, or like a, a big star mm. but it's someone local that really you know inspired you to For sure um you know to sing the, the way that, that you do because you know whether you believe it or not you know maybe you're just being modest you know great but, you know, I know you have admirers, uh, especially here in, in our church, you know, know for sure that that love you, that love the way that you minister, you know, because singing is one thing, but ministering is another thing. Mm. And, you know, you minister, right? You can definitely, it almost would feel like you're grabbing them by the hand and say, like, come here, like, mm. let, let me take you to this place. Uh, let me show you, you know, and... Uh, <coughs> You know, we, we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but how do you think, you know, for, again, those aspiring, not just singers, but like people that want to lead other people into the presence of God, how do you, what would you tell them? To pray. I mean, that that's the biggest thing. If uh, And prayer is a conversation, right? Like if I spend a lot of time with you, mm-hmm. I'm going to talk like you. I'm going to say the jokes that you do. I'm going to, you know, mimic you. Right. When you do the same thing with the Lord, that just, and it comes out naturally when you're singing, when you're uh, ministering, um, you know, sometimes you ad lib, which is you don't sing the song or the lyrics of the song. You just like go off of what you're feeling. Mm. And that's what you're feeling like a moment with God, like no one else is around, but you and the Lord. And that's what, where that invitation comes in. Um, but yeah, that that's what I usually say. Like your prayer life needs to go from here to here, because then you're gonna have God's um, personality, God's um, character, character. Like. Um, you know, things that He tells you in the secret, He'll tell you at the moment mm-hmm. um, when you're singing. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like when we speak um, or preach. Or and when we sing, it's a whole different. Like God just speaks to you in a different way. Mm-hmm. And when when you're singing, at least for me, uh, you know, God would allow me to say or sing things that only He and I had mm-hmm. had um, experienced in God's presence. Mm-hmm. Love that. Um, I think that's what you know. Some of these uh, young, up and like uh, exp- aspiring, aspiring uh, singers need to hear right because you want to like maybe focus more on like can i hit that note you know can i like push my uh i don't know i don't know all the music lingo and stuff but and it comes across it comes across i think um you know when you hear someone uh with like a a a voice you know and i'm gonna say her name uh kelly something kelly she's blonde curly hair kelly clarkson somebody Kelly um, does all, all these uh, uh, crazy runs, you know, that that's awesome. But if there's anointing behind oh. it, that's. Yeah, even, yeah, no, th- there's even, there's more, right? Like, I don't know if you've heard Tasha Cobbs. Okay. Like, she just sings one note, and you're like, are my feet going up? Mm, like, come on, Am man. I being lifted right <laughs> now? <laughs> and there's certain people in the church that do that, you know. We could name them, but. We won't. No, <laughs> no I, and there's some people from other churches too that you know I could give a little quick shout out. Shout out, you know, my girl Amariah, where you at, girl? Mm, like, come yes. on, man, she's like a, a 13 year old, 14, I think maybe now. And I was listening to her know. on a video the other day. Wow. And yeah, like, but I think even with her, like, um, you know, obviously there's talent there, but there's also you can tell like people have sewn into her. Mm. You know, whether it's her cousins, her mm. mother her aunt, her grandma, you know, probably here. I think she was still around uh, while MRI was young, but her bisabuela, her great grandmother mm. or, or whatnot. So I always love to see that. And I see that actually here. Like I, there's a couple of um, 
young ladies that come here um, that I've seen that where like it's been from generation to generation, mm -hmm. right? That that the grandma's right there, like nope, like this is this is God's uh, you know uh, minister, for you sure. know, and so sh she's gonna be somebody for God, like she's reserved for God, and I love to see that, you know, when at a very young age, you know, they're already instilled these values, these core convictions. Mm -hmm and already like being built to be warriors for God, you know? Um, and even if you didn't grow up in the church and, you know, haven't experienced that and maybe they're like, well, what about me? Like, I've never had that. Um, but you have to give, again, prayer is key and, and your time will come and you'll know what to do. A lot of people say, well, I'm not gifted or I'm not talented, but like you said in the beginning, there's always, some, God is not going to make something unpurposefully. Mm -hmm. Like he's not gonna build something and not use it for something, so it's just, just finding keep pushing. out. Yeah, just keep pushing. It's finding out what that is, uh, and then you can get to that level. Um, but so I love that you mentioned again that it was you know prayer time, right? It's that communication with God. Um, but if you're gonna mention prayer, I, I feel like you cannot leave out the Word of God because sure. even even when you were talking about prayer, you know, and I've said this before, but you know, with prayer, like, it is a simple thing, right, where you communicate with God, but you can also take it to a deeper level. Mm -hmm. And the way you take it to a deeper level is to communicate the way that God communicates, mm -hmm. right, to speak his language. Yeah. How do you find out what his language is? Is read his word, right? If you can read his word, um, then then you, like, you basically, what you're doing is, is tattooing it in your heart, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now it's it's already inside of you. And it just comes out like sometimes you're not even thinking about it and it's already coming out because um, you, you've digested it. Right. You, you've thought about it. And that's why he says to meditate in his word, mm. you know, to, to allow it to really just sink in. Yes. Um, and it, it b really does become a part of you. Yeah. Um, and so when we say these things, when we say, you know, spend more time with God, you know, read his word. Like what we're saying is, you know, allow God to to live inside of you. Mm. Right. Because. As young people, it's really easy to spend a lot of time doing other things, whether it's watching TV or, you know, being on TikTok or whatever. And it just consumes our time. And they're not bad things by themselves. They become bad when when that's all you do, mm. you know, and that's all you're feeding your soul. That's all you're feeding your mind. Um, and then there's no wonder that you speak like the world. You talk mm, like them. Um, and worse yet than speaking or talking, dressing like them is that you have the same ideologies mm. as them. That's even worse because you don't even realize it at that point. You know, you think that, that it's maybe the word that's wrong. You start trying to, to change the things like the, how the word is being interpreted. You're like, well, maybe I've just not understood it correctly. And you start trying to change it mm. when you shouldn't be trying to change the word of God but allow the word of God to change you, come on, Sam. right? And this isn't about, you know, anybody <laughs> preaching or come anything, on, coach. but you know, um, but, but that's what we mean. And, and so again, that translates when you're up there ministering, yeah. you know, because you cannot give something that you don't have, you know? So if you're up there and you're trying to minister to other people, but you know, you haven't spent any time, like you said, in the, in the secret place, you haven't spent any time communicating with God. You know, you haven't heard from God. Like, how are you supposed to speak mm. what God, you know, is is telling? Hold on, I'm hear it. I'm how, louder you know, for the people in the back. <laughs> how are you supposed to, you know, communicate those things, right? When That's good. when God's not um, telling you those things. Yeah, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of the things that are happening now, um, and I see it in my nieces and nephews who are now 15, mm -hmm. 14, 13. Um, we're living in 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 a gener with a generation that doesn't want to explore their emotions or mm. who they are because they feel like they're never enough because they're comparing themselves mm. to the Kardashians or they're comparing themselves to, you know, these bigger stars. Instagram models. Think, yeah. yeah, they used to call them influence, influencers, but I think they call them something else now. Um, and so, you know, you get on Netflix and spend 17 hours, straight hours on that because you don't want to deal with what you're feeling or, uh, mm -hmm. but what you're feeling, you take that to God and God will do something with that, you know, and that's what he will use. He will use your weakness mm -hmm. and that's in the word of God. You know, God is strong in our weakness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so I think, you know, that 
to just connect that with no, what I, you were saying. I, I love that, you know, because I absolutely would agree that, you know, I think sometimes our soul is crying out, right? Like that that's that's almost as if you were in a vehicle and you see like the check engine light is on. Mm. And what you do is sometimes you just ignore it, yeah. right? But it's like, no, no, no. Like it's trying to tell you something, that something's wrong. Mm. But instead of trying to, you know, fix that or address it, what we do is we ignore it, right? We ignore it with... Um, things like that again are not necessarily bad you know and that's how the enemy like uses it you yeah. know um the adversary uses it um what he does is he distracts us you know he, he doesn't necessarily use something that is you know like in our definition bad or evil right, right. he just uses something that that we're like well that's not a bad thing anyway mm. but it's taking away from our relationship with god yeah right and doesn't allow us to address those very serious issues that we have uh so no i i couldn't agree more on how um you know this time that we're living in you know we are just we're becoming numb you know mm -hmm. we, we don't want to yeah. feel yep. you know it's just easy to um do other things to to not really address the real issue that is going sure. on uh inside of us so um it's something that i think us people that have been through those things need to talk about those things yeah. and uh, help these this younger generation yeah you know because if someone doesn't tell them they're never gonna know you yeah. know like it's just they're just gonna continue down down that path but um but there is hope yeah. right and and um and as long as we do our part you know that that can that can uh, go a long way so um i love that i love that um again um, I think that this is really helpful for, again, any aspiring singers, anybody that wants to minister. And it's not just um, for those that want to minister with um, singing because um, you can minister in different ways. Yeah, you for know, sure. Whether it's playing an instrument or even preaching, man. If if what you want to do is preach, you know, um, I know, Leslie, like you've had the privilege of, uh, of preaching, not just here locally at our church, but they've even invited you to, yeah, was that it was Brazil, awesome. right? Was Brazil. Like that. Was like, what was well, that I was like? there and then I was invited back. I was amazing. Uh, um, you know, you, you mentioned that uh, music has been a big part of me. Um, but I think also that is something that I love, you know, and I was always one to say, man, I could never get up on a microphone and preach. I'm never going to do that. Um, and I'll go even further and say that because we would have preachers that would sing before they would preach. Mm, come on. <laughs> and they just take up time. I, I think I know where you're going with and this. Come so on. When I started <laughs> preaching um, or speaking, I would like sing and then. Did somebody uh, call you out or anything? No, but I did. Like in my head. I, I feel like, like oh, I called I'm, you out a couple I'm times. I'm being that person. You did? I feel like I called you out and I was like. <laughs> uh, I was like, girl, you always sing before you preach, but Hey man, like it works for you. And, it, and I really do feel like it works like in, and it's good. I don't think you should like not do that. I think that, uh, it really prepares, right. The, uh, uh, the atmosphere, you know, the, the place, the platform for, for what you're about to speak, you know? And so, and man, it also absolutely. calms my nerves and it, and you know, <laughs> might do something for you as well, but <laughs> But I, I really do. I'm like, man, I, I loved it, you know. And so, you know, I think we talked about it before and you were like, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. And I was like, no, man, what are you talking about? Like, But I can't help it, you know, especially when you walk in and the worship team has done like this amazing job. And I just want to throw my two cents in mm, there, you know. Come on, man. <laughs> throw a, a nickel in there. Throw a, <laughs> throw dime. a dime. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I, I love that. Uh and, you know, that's why, I again, I say, like, um, maybe to to other people that don't know you, you might, like, not be very gifted. But for people that know you, we know, you know, what you have uh, inside of you, how creative you are, um, you know, whether it's music, whether it's, you know, um, preaching. Um, and even, like, I mean, I had the privilege of serving alongside of you with, you know, leadership. And um, I know again, I learned a lot from you, right? And, um, you know, I, I know f for you, you've studied a little bit of leadership and uh, how to manage that, how to how to help other people, how to lead, because that's not an easy thing, you know? Like, to lead someone, like, you have to understand the people that you're leading, their strengths and their weaknesses. 
you have to understand um, egos, you know, and like you can't say certain things to certain people. You have to understand personalities. Mm. Like, tell me more. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I don't. I don't want to. Like, like. Well, first of all, I had the hard job of you know dealing with you. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I've been nothing but nice to her. But uh, <laughs> okay, no, I'm playing. No, uh, but before I say that uh, or talk about leadership, yeah. Um, I, I know this is your podcast or whatever, but um, you're also someone. You know, we talked about. We go way back. And we were there in the moments where we've almost wanted to throw the towel. Mm. And then we've seen and helped Speak each other. <laughs> <laughs> we've helped each other grow. And and not only us two, but I think we have uh, certain friends um, that you just know that you'll have for a long time. And, and that you're you're proud to, to walk that journey with them. And, mm. and that it has been the case with you. I mean, we've had uh, many deep conversations about it and uh, to see you grow also. I mean, I don't know if you're going to talk about your process about speaking. I think you did talk about it in the last podcast. A little bit. Um, but, um, I mean, you you have grown so much and, I, and I'm super proud of that, Thank um, you. of you. Um, but going back to the leadership, that has also been something. So a season that I loved I love that. I'm a person that, that believes in seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, God brings us in and out of seasons. And I believe that there are two main ones, a season of plant mm, and a season on, where your fruit grows from what preaching. you planted. Yeah, I didn't know <laughs> we we're about to preach in here. This, you know, this isn't just a conversation. This is a little right now for <laughs> <laughs> open up your Bibles. Um, no, but um, that was one of my favorite seasons. And it's funny because when I, um, uh, the pastor called me into the office and, you know, when you go to pastor's office, mm. you know, your heart just starts beating fast or whatever. And any, uh, I had like a leadership in mind, I, you know, um, that I thought I would get. And then he, you know, spoke to me about the youth leadership and I was there just like in shock, but taking it in. And again, uh, how do you say it? Uh, poniéndome, you know, what God had given me even though I had, I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but God in that moment gave me like a vision and he gave me a vision of like a baseball team and a soccer team and how they, they have a coach for um, like defense, you know, they have mm -hmm. a coach for the goalies have a coach. Oh, okay. um, so they have a coach for like training and, and like people that help them through different mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And I, God told me, like, that's how I want you to build this mm. a team. Like, it's not about you. It's about a team. And I knew that because I knew that speaking wasn't one of my strengths. Um, doing dramas or skits or stuff like that um, I would argue wasn't that, my thing. No. Okay. Okay, no. But we'll, we'll, I won't, yeah. Um, and ahead. so that's how that came about, how, how a team um, came into the picture. And it's also in, in the Bible when, when uh, Moses' father-in-law, tells him, hey, you're doing too much. You need to set some leaders up mm. that will help you and um, delegate, in other words. Yeah. And so, so yeah, you were talking about getting to know your leaders. That's important. That's important because then you, you don't know how to lead if you don't know them. Um, but, yeah. I'm, I'm Figuring out their strengths and their weaknesses. Tell them a little bit about my weakness. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. I mean, uh, where do I start? I still yeah. have the notes on that. <laughs> no, no, but uh, that's true. I don't know that, you know, before you came around, there was that idea of a team. Uh, maybe there was. I don't know. Um, but you established a team and you said, OK, you worry about this. You worry about yeah, that. Yeah, we did do that. And to this day, uh, we still do it that way. We still have. Uh, people that are assigned to specific ministries um, because uh, yeah, like it's, it's a lot of work, you know, yeah. and it's, you know, I don't know how these other churches do it. You know, I think our church is anywhere from with youth, you know, like anywhere from 60 to a little over a hundred, you know? And so that's a lot of people to try to, um, you know, flock, you know, take care of and, and motivate and, and help uh, along their, their Christian, you know, faith walk with Christ. So, but you guys have great leaders now. Shout out to Amen. Uh, Shout PCJ out to and Jen. Amen. No, you guys. 
They're the best. And everybody, everybody that was in the team. Julio, who's in the background. Come on, shout out to Julio. <laughs> hey, Julio, pull up uh, you know, <laughs> leadership, the definition of leadership on there real quick for me. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Um, but, yeah, no, we uh, we are blessed to have the team that we have. Yeah, for like, sure. We for really sure. are. Um, you know, I, I thank God for um, not just everyone that, that serves alongside of us, but, you know, our pastor yes. and how – he has believed in us, how much he's yep. invested in us. You know, we are the epitome of blessed. Yes, for know? sure. And so, um, you know, there are times where we ask pastor for more things, you know, <laughs> but, you know, he, he believes in us, man. And I don't yes. know that there's a lot of pastors that believe in their young people uh, like mm. our pastor. So, um, you know, I think we need to give credit where credit is for due. Sure. And, and our pastor deserves a lot of credit, man. And that's what leaders do. They they see things that you don't even see, mm. you know, and and Pastor Flores saw something in me that mm. I didn't even see. Come on. Come on. No, I uh, absolutely uh, uh, believe that as well. And uh, I think you've seen things in me that I didn't really see in myself. And so I uh, I appreciate that. And I won't get into that because, you know, that'll <laughs> get, it'll get you sentimental <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but it, it takes that, you know, and. Man, for anybody watching this, and, and especially if you're in a leadership position, uh, man, like, uh, you need to do that. You know, if you're not doing that, you're not leading them correctly. Mm, that's because right. sometimes people are just looking for somebody to believe in that's them. That's right. You know, and, you know, when they're not afforded an opportunity, when they're not afforded, you know, those words of inspiration, you know, to say, like, hey, I believe in you, yes. you know, or I see this in you, like, it, it never amounts to anything but if if you let them know that hey i see you and not only do i see you but i can i see like what you have inside of you um because yeah it's very true sometimes we don't see like what we have inside of us and it just takes that one leader to to see that and to push you into it like because you know there's going to be pushback people are gonna be like no no like i could never mm. do something like that you know uh and then uh but i think with that you can going even further to spending time with people mm, that you feel on. have that potential because that happened uh with with me here you know i would go and purposefully invite them out for coffee um but that was just me you know because once they trust me then i can be like hey can you help me out with this and then not only are you helping them but you're delegating you know and I mean, if you're a leader that likes the spotlight, I guess, but that shouldn't be what a leader does. Yeah. So, um, no, absolutely. I, I think, you know, I love what you said to spend time with them. Right. Um, I think sometimes as a leader, we can fall into the this getting busy thing mm. and then one, try to do too much. And then two, um, just use people. Mm. Right. And. That's not what this is about, right? Mm. Like uh, when you lead people, it's not just, you know, asking them to do certain things, you know, giving them tasks. Uh, it's spending time with them, mm -hmm. right? If you can spend time with them, one, you build a relationship and yeah. you said it, like you build that trust. Yeah. And so now that they know, now that now they know that you genuinely care about them, that it's, it's not just a job, you know, it's, you know, it's more than that. It's a friendship. It's family. You know, yeah, uh, they're going to remember that moment that you took them out for coffee more than they will remember your preachings. Mm. Like you can preach. If you ask someone, one of the kids to tell you about a sermon or something, they probably won't know. But if you ask them, you know, who has influenced you, they're going to talk about that person that has taken them out that they look up to. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think for me, I know I've had to kind of learn that the hard way a little bit where I've, I've said this often, but I can be selfish at times mm. and just be concerned about myself. I think for a lot of us, it's easy to be selfish, right? And well, I just did the, the job, the task that they asked me to do, you know, but when you go beyond that, you know, yeah. and you, you spend time with somebody, like you said, take them out for coffee or even just go visit them at their home, you know, um, I feel like that goes oh, a, a lot, a ways, a lot longer ways or whatever. Um, so uh, that's important. Yeah. It's important to, to spend that time with people. 
because that's that's the like that's who we are as people we we need to spend time you know uh with those people around us you know that's how we make those connections and stuff For sure. so um i love that um i think that you know leaders leaders need to hear that and and hopefully and you know practice those things um you mentioned you know people remembering um you spending time with people more than like a preaching and i yeah, thought I you were going to mention like <laughs> a, a preacher or something and like a famous sure. preacher you know throw their name out there when i invited you i was i thought of like getting into a, a conversation and this is my way of segue segue into that conversation <laughs> um so you know who would you say is a like a top 10 preacher you know um or top five let's go top five because that, that list is too long wow top five yeah that you enjoy that you I mean, like they're probably people that you they've never heard probably, of. yeah people uh, have already heard of yeah i mean my all-time favorite and you know this pastor amy mm, okay um she's my number one female by the way um <laughs> oh we, we'll get to that um i mean like top three yeah but let's not make that that list that long. Oh gosh, I mean, I, it's not long. Um, I, I like um, he's from Oklahoma. Oh, uh, Mike Todd. Todd, Mike Todd, and and I'll tell you the reason, and, and I'll just mention those two because okay. those are the ones that are, came, um, because they speak truth. And, and they correct, they speak correction. I guess you can say, um. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So here. I know we're gonna get into it. No. So yeah, we're gonna get into it. So okay. Um. So for a lot of people, you might have heard of other preachers. You know, you mentioned it's probably not some that you've heard that much. Well, you did mention one that's kind of really popular right now, which is Mike Todd. Um. But, um. Some of the other like really known preachers, uh. For example, um. Now I'm not gonna think about <laughs> them. Uh. Well, first of all, my favorite preacher. If you don't already know, I've definitely have told anybody that knows me it's robert madu look him up man he's amazing <laughs> uh he, st he steals a lot of my material i don't know like he calls himself a hollerback preacher too i don't know i feel like he's heard my stuff and, and that's why he does <laughs> that i don't know <laughs> but um yeah so robert madu he's my favorite preacher but uh, maybe you've heard of joel osteen he's a really popular preacher uh maybe you've heard of stephen furtick mm -hmm. right those are really popular preachers but i think you know this is what i want to get into is they're like the new age type preachers, right? Where they preach what I would consider like prosperity preachings. Meaning, you know, it's not just about like how to like make more money. It's not just about like finances, but literally what they preach about too is um, how to advance, how to conquer, how to gain more influence and all these other things. And that's where you lose me, you know, like when you start talking about, you know, ways on how do you can better yourself you know, on a platform that was designed not to better you, but to glorify God, right? Mm. This isn't about glorifying you. This is about glorifying God. That's where you lose me, right? Um, when you start shifting the focus from God and you shift it to, to, to oneself, that's like, again, like for me, that's a no, no. And what's crazy is we don't realize it. You know, we, we think because they mentioned Jesus, because they used him in their preaching that they're preaching the gospel, but they're really not. What they're preaching is a self-help type of um, a preaching. Like, what do you think? Would you agree with me or would you disagree? And I would even say <clears throat> on occasions, sorry. Go ahead. I would even say on occasions, my man, Mike Todd, has fallen into that a little bit. Uh, I've heard Mike Todd, and I like him actually a lot too. And by the way, I'm going to also preface by saying this. Um I, I like Pastor Mike Todd. If you hear this, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, if if any one of them like hear this, like which they're probably not gonna like. <laughs> hey, <laughs> only my mom is watching this. <laughs> I'm gonna send it to my grandma <laughs> right <laughs> after this. <laughs> for real, but you have to translate for her. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to learn English at 93. You know? I'm, hey, come on, man! Like it's never too late. Come on, grandma, mm -hmm. let's do it. Um, like this, this isn't me criticizing. Like, uh, I think anybody that's doing the work of God is, um, has their place. Right. And I think, you know, more power to them. Continue to do what you're doing, you know, um, 
they're reaching a lot more people than I'm reaching, you know, and I think that they have their place. I think for them, um, they with the way that they orchestrate their ministry is to bring in more people, right? New people. The problem I find is with with Christians that are seasoned, Christians that have been in the uh, in the word of God for such a long time and are still listening to that because that type of those types of messages are messages that are like for for baby Christians, right? Christians that don't really and we can disagree. I don't know if like I can't tell what that look if that's <laughs> you disagreeing or not. But um that's what I feel like, you know, and so sometimes when I see like a a seasoned Christian, you know, like post something about Stephen Furtick, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I'm just questioning, you know, like, I don't know. But I mean, I don't know, because I say that. But at the same time, too, though, like it helps because not everybody that's like, you know, watching that is a seasoned Christian. So maybe you're showing it to some of your friends that are not Christian. So who knows? But sometimes it does make me uh, question your faith a little But I don't know. Like, that's just the the human in me to want to judge. But what do you think? Like, would you like, would you agree with that statement? Uh, So for me, I've always had my own personal opinion on that. Um, And uh, I think that every preacher and every person that's been called to preach the word of God has been called for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And maybe they have the gift of speaking on that. Um, Now, if you're a pastor and all you speak is that, I don't think that is correct because, again, I go back to, you know, my preferences. A pastor guides you and leads you. He's going to tell you when you're wrong. He's not only going to tell you about the blessings. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but having a series about it, I I think is fine. Yeah. Um, But again, if you're preaching that Sunday after Sunday, and if you know Pastor Flores, and I talk about Pastor Flores because he's from here, right? uh, And we grew up with him. You know, he will. He hits everything. He will preach to you. Mm -hmm. You know, come on, yep. And he doesn't hold punches. We were sitting in the front. We were getting that holy Mm, spit on on. us. You know, (laughs) Um, but you know, I I I think that's the right way. You know, you got to have a balance for sure. Obviously, like you said, the newcomers or whatever, they need a little bit of milk. Right, exactly. You know, but if you're <laughs> if you're a man, if you're ten years in, man, and you're still on that little milk bottle, you Dios know, come on, no, the other is someone, no, man, you got to be on that meat, you know, you got to be eating solid foods. Um, that's the issue, really, and you know, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, I don't know, like for someone like Stephen Furtick, I think that's why he gets criticized so much, is because that's all he preaches about. It's about the blessing. It's how to overcome, how to like get past your obstacles. Sometimes it's not about getting past your obstacles. Mm. It's about figuring out why the obstacle's there, right? Come you know, on. sometimes God's the one that brought Come the obstacle, on. you know. It's to like Second to, loyal. <laughs> to direct you, you know, to, to change the path in which you're going, you know, and yet we're trying to move the storm away. We're trying mm. to move, you know, whatever we're going through and you know, it's it's just not it's not what it's about, you know. So, you know, in <laughs> Psalms twenty three, uh, David talks Come about on, the rod it. and the staff. Come on, <laughs> I that's remember all. of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> tell them the story. I can, I can I can recite the verse, people. <laughs> no, Come but on. tell them what happened okay. in Mexico. What so, was going on in the background? So we went to uh, <laughs> a mission trips in um, Mexico, Durango, Mexico, and um, I don't know. I think we were out on a field or something. On the and mountains. We, on the mountains. El it was Cerro. beautiful. It was beautiful. Yes. Yes, it was. And we just see a bunch of sheep out there. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't hold back. I was Something inside of me just came out. And was I like was just flock. like, <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of them, man. Like, it really was. And I was like, it's on Facebook. The Lord is my shepherd, <laughs> man. I shall not want. Yeah, you know, I just I just couldn't help myself. It just came out. <laughs> it's the only verse that I know. Excuse me. It's the only scripture that I know. Now I'm playing. Um, but but yes. Uh what was I saying? Psalms 23. That? Psalms 23. Psalm oh, 23. yeah. Thank you. Psalms 23. It talks about the rod and the staff, right? The the staff is to direct you um, and the rod is to correct you, mm. right? Like it, one is is to help guide you, right? So in, in a graceful way. And the other one is to say, hey, stop that, <laughs> you know, because um, it's not always just, you know, positive reinforcement. Sometimes you need to know like yeah. that you know like that that's wrong and you shouldn't do it that way. And, and so if you read that whole New Testament when Paul mm-hmm. I mean Paul 
Paul is is something special. He's amazing. Uh, and I love him. And people say I spend a little too much time with him because <laughs> they they hear they hear my uh, my conversations and I sound a lot like him in, in what I say. I maybe quote a lot of his scriptures and stuff. But um, but yeah, like th- there's something about correction that is needed as well. You For know, sure. um, where you need to be told sometimes no. Right. You can't always tell somebody yes. Mm. Sometimes there's got to be a no. You know, sometimes you got to tell somebody be direct and tell them like what you're doing is not correct. Right. Mm. And if you continue down that path, uh, it leads to trouble. And so, you know, I would say that that's more of a traditional type of preaching where you speak a little bit on condemnation on how, you know, there is a hell, Mm. you know, Um, you know, I understand the whole loving part. I understand the whole loving part, but, but you got to tell people also that if you don't accept Jesus as Lord and savior, you know, if you don't recognize him as Lord and savior, that, that, that there's only one way, Mm. you know, that there's not several ways. Cause in this day and age now, you know, people want you to believe that there's different ways. Right. Um, but that's not the truth. The truth is it's only through Jesus Christ that yeah. you can find salvation. And the Bible says that it's narrow. So, mm. Amen. So um, there's only one path, and yeah. that's Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, so you got to he- be able to hear both. And I remember, man, like, and we've had this conversation before, but, you know, us talking about how, man, our church is so uh, conservative, I guess, like you could say, where it's just, you know, you can't wear pants, you know, you can't, like, um, put an ear earring on or like you know change your hair color or whatever like they just like shame you for all these like different things uh and i've always or i used to always think just kind of like man i wish i could go to the white church because at a white (laughs) church man you could show up in shorts you know you could uh put a have a tattoo you can just all these different things you know um but we're here with the hispanics you know it was just like nah man like you can do any of those things it's cultural Cultural. Yeah, um, but now, like, I find myself like saying, like, no, you know what? I agree with him now. Maybe because uh, I'm getting older, you know, or whatnot. Yeah, but I think that's it. But it's just it's crazy, like how like that just happens. Where you know now, I, c- I guess I can understand like the older people where they're just like, <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But <laughs> but I, I can see like it's it's just crazy just with the age how like my perspective changes a little bit where I'm just like. Yes. Well, I, I think that's just Latin people, though, because if you go to a white church, it's pretty low. But you go to a Hispanic mean, church low? and What's like low? the bocinas are, yeah. you know, they, they even have the drums on there with without the because if you don't yeah. cover the drums, then you get a whole other sound. But the final question is, um, what do you think about my boy Dak? Oh, man, I was torn. I cried. Yeah. Do you see the meme of... <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! There was a meme. He had uh, the hat and the like pink shirt and the Aww. the khakis, <laughs> and then uh, you know how y- you know what I'm talking about, right? What he was wearing before the game? It was like three games ago or something like that. Like no, it was this game. He had like a pink shirt and a black cover. I don't know. No, I think it was like three three games ago or something. But like everybody like reposted it and like was wearing the similar outfit, <laughs> and so they reposted that, but with this. <laughs> foot like crooked <laughs> like, they did my boy dirty but now nah, i think the cowboys still have a chance and uh he'll be back and he'll be back better um, and uh you know we'll we we dallas people are just w- we have faith man we just <laughs> believe you know like it doesn't matter what the circumstance is we believe the stars almost made it you know they they almost won the championship nobody okay. even realized it <laughs> uh <laughs> We forgot that the stars are still a, a team, <laughs> but hey, they made it to the championship. Sure almost did. won. You know, the hey, by the way, Stanley we have Cup. a female WNBA team that I think you should watch. Yeah. They're amazing. Name, name a star in the. D- you <laughs> see? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm telling you. you name, see? name a WNBA star. Why don't you want to go watch a women's basketball team? I can name a few uh, uh, women stars from no, the. I'm so asking why don't so you. So what I'm go? saying is I'm supporting them more than any other girl that's <laughs> trying to tell me that to go watch the show. Skylar Dig is where you at, man. She hot. <laughs> anyway, all right. Hey, God bless you guys. Hey, thank you for watching. This was fun. Um, we probably are going to edit out the last part. I don't know. Uh, so if, if it looks like it got cut out, we cut out a part where maybe I was being a little sexist and I, I couldn't defend myself. So, 
uh, we might cut that out. So love you guys, and uh, we'll have to do this again. Uh, seriously, like come back again, and we'll sure. we'll we'll talk again, and you know, hopefully it's just as fun and maybe even better. You yes. Know? So um, hey, like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless.